Hey guys, Dilly Davin here. So we're going to do a little bit of a different video today. I've already actually played this game, so we're going to do a little bit more of a commentative perspective to it. Um, so this was actually the fastest game of ARAM that I have ever played and won. I've been rolled over before, but never quite did the uh, rolling over, so to speak. Uh, a lot of it usually comes down to team compilation, so... We actually did get a pretty good team here. We got, uh, you know, Tanky Volibear, we got Evelyn, we got Jinx. Um, you know, we got enough damage and enough life there to duke it out. Now, I myself got Varus, who I have never gotten to play before. I've seen him played in the LCS and the LEC, and I've seen some of the things he can do there, but this was the first time I really got to test him out as a champion. Um... As you guys know, in ARAM, you start off straight up with 3D levels. Um, you get 1,300 gold, I believe it is, maybe 1,400. And so I didn't quite know how to build Varus, so I went ahead and started off with the um, Vampire Acceptor for a little bit of lifesteal, so maybe we could stay in the game long enough to get good enough gold to actually build some solid recommended items. And I started off with the Boots of Speed, because you never know when you're going to want to get away quick. Um... I was very impressed with the way Varus's Q scaled in this game. I was very close to having a perfect game in ARAM, which I don't know if you guys have ever played before, but it is very hard to do, seeing as you can't recall to the fountain for HP, and you're unable to buy items unless you die. So it makes it kind of difficult, but again... His Q did, it scaled really well with, you know, only the one item to begin with. And between that and his ult being able to bind and then branch off to other enemies was just great for ARAM gameplay in general because you are in the single lane. So we were able to kind of tag that off pretty well. And his Q ability, you can even see it a couple times in this game, it will reach the entirety of of this uh, screen not the entirety of the map but the entirety of the screen and then some so it does get some really good distance that way now the enemy team they do they have a Warwick and they have a Mundo so they're not half bad tank wise you could even see the alt right there trying to kind of branch out a little bit but they kept trying to pick solo fights whereas my team they did the right thing we focused on the team fights and we really tried to uh, solo out some of those those fights themselves. But, yep, we're able to get Mundo down there. And you see at this point we got a good uh, 4 versus 2. I don't know why our other champions running back that. Oh, see, okay, that's one thing that will bother me in a game of ARAM. If you see the health pop up, do your teammates a favor and ping it. I, you know, clearly have full health here, so that's not a big issue. But you can notice that my mana is relatively depleted. Just like a few of our other teammates. And that health, it restores mana too. Not a lot of people seem to notice that. So being able to ping that out for your teammates might just make the difference in a team fight. Especially for the fact that you can't recall and replenish that just like a normal game. Now again, Warwick, he's trying to pick out this solo fight. He does get the shutdown. But we're able to get that kill back and focus up on a Mundo. I don't know why I'm calling him a Mundo. It's Dr. Mundo. <laughs> it's like a Moo Moo and uh, Mundo mix <laughs> there. Now, he is able to pull me in under this uh, turret. And that kind of scares me. I'm able to make it out with just a sliver of my health. Again, we have the Vampiric Scepter. There's a health charge there. And... I kind of go against my own word here, and I tag this out, but I'm fairly certain I pinged it, and I waited just long enough for her to be able to get back and get that as well. We're able to get Warwick. We're not able to save Volibear, but we're going to be able to, you know, get these other couple kills, and our, our health or our damage mitigator, Volibear, he's down now. So we're just trying to poke out their health as best we can. As you can see, Evelyn, she doesn't have an insane amount of health, but she does have good health regen. So not too worried about her there. I'm able to get in for that as well. 
and we just start clearing this wave and start pushing back the way that we need to. As you can see, Jinx, she's able to get... They're all able to get the items they want, but I am still stuck here with the Vampire Acceptor and just the regular old boots at 3-0 and 14 already into minute 6 of ARAM. Now, as you can kind of see from the beginning, the first engagement doesn't happen till I want to say a minute, minute 10 in there. So overall, I would say that this game... Oh, wow, Evelyn right here. I don't know how she's able to... Look at that health. And she's able to regenerate it so quickly. Now, I'm slightly surprised I don't see Evelyn in a little bit more of the LCS and LEC matchups. But I have seen Varus a few times, and I've noticed that they use his Q to poke out and try and steal objectives a little bit better. Uh, it really is amazing what they'll do with him. And his attack speed scales so well. I don't know if it's the items they build or just in general that W. But it does seem to help a lot. And that Q, it doesn't just hit the first champion and go down. It pierces through all of them. Almost like uh, Caitlyn's Piltover. Or her Q. I don't know if I'm pronouncing it correctly. But her Q is able to pierce really well. But the downside to her Q is it's a one shot, you aim it, you fire it. Now Varus' Q on the other hand, you're able to actually charge that and control the distance of it. Which naturally you're going to want to say, oh I want to shoot it as far as I can. But sometimes you don't always have enough time to fire that off. Sometimes you're only able to get the closer encounter. And also... In certain engagements, you don't necessarily want to fire it all the way through someone. You might get that piercing damage, but if you're in the jungle and you're in an engagement, you also might kind of give yourself away if they're able to see where your Q is coming from. And that's not something you always want to do. But I do like the fact that you are able to charge this one and aim it as long as you'd like. Well, not as long as you'd like. It will release at a certain point, but... You're able to charge that and kind of take a second and figure out who you really want to shoot for. Now I'm sitting back here again. I still only have that one item, but I know I have enough damage to actually scale this out. That Q there is able to pick, uh, who was it? I believe it was Warwick. I was able to pick Warwick out there pretty quickly. And uh, we're just able to push up for this inhib and take that pretty easily. Again, our team's meshing really well here, so it works out pretty well. Now, in the future, I'm going to try and do a little bit more live recording. I was just playing this game for fun, but, like, the actual engagements themselves and the way it played out happened just the way you would want an actual YouTube recording to go. And I just wanted to share that with you guys so that way you guys could uh, enjoy it as much as I have because I've actually rewatched this a few times now. Now, as you can see there, I kind of let myself sit in and try and take the turn out a little bit longer. I thought maybe my team might come back in for another engagement. We didn't quite see that, so that's okay. It's first death. You know, we're sitting at 6 and 121. We get Blade of the Ruin King, and we got our blade there too as well for the magic penetration and the uh, armor penetration. So, we're able to come back in this game with a couple of really good items and start to actually make a real difference in this team fight now again I did say this was the fastest game of ARAM I've ever played and I know we're looking at nine minutes right here which I'm gonna tell you we only have about a minute left well a minute 20 to be exact we're about to pile drive through this team and I'm pretty sure I pick up the triple kill right here yep that's right and <laughs> we're gonna be able to push in and finish this game pretty easily in this next minute we have our super minions already. We do need to take down their uh, inner turrets still, but those will come down pretty quick. We'll take out this Warwick here. I take some damage from the turrets because I try and deal a little too much damage to Warwick while I'm in the range. Maybe should have used my Q there and let Volibear take some more of the damage. You know, let him mitigate that a little bit better. But I chose to stay in there. And I try and peg out with the E there because it does slow them down and the more we can slow them down the less they are able to dodge some of my other team's abilities I know I'm able to kind of target mine pretty well for the most part but if they're not hitting theirs super well that slowdown might just give them the edge that they're looking for 
Again, Warwick, he's trying his absolute best, but he's picking these team fights by himself, and he opens up their inner inhib so easily. Sadly, we're going to lose her there, but I'm going to tag with the Qs and try and get another kill here real quick. I think we do on Vayne. No, nope, we give that to Jinx, but we're able to finish out that game in 11 minutes. Fastest game of ARAM I've ever played. Now, I hope you guys enjoyed that as much as I did. If you didn't, if you guys have any comments, concerns, uh, sustains, improves, anything that you guys would like to see, go ahead and drop that in the comment box below. If you guys enjoyed that video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and a subscribe, and we will catch you guys next time.